Hey guys, this is Sam and we are back in the workshop for another little tech video. So today I'm going to be showing you uh, my technique for soldering Deans connectors onto a battery. Um, now I've already cut the wire here. Uh, so yeah, we just cut the wire and um, strip off the insulation, these little wire strippers here. And as you're uh, pulling off that loose bit of insulation, just twist it, give a little twist, and that helps to keep all the strands together uh, without, without touching the strands. So you can probably hear there's a bit of a buzz in the background. That's the, uh, the heat gun and the fume extractor on the soldering station all doing their job. So what we're going to do first um, is we're going to tin the end of this wire. Now a lot of people um, just go straight ahead and um, heat up the wire here, but what we're going to do first is we're going to use some flux. Now this is just average soldering flux, you can get it at pretty much any hardware shop, uh, B&Q over in the UK here, uh, but most places are going to sell this stuff. So we just apply a little bit of flux to coat the, uh, the strands there, and this really, really helps um, soldering on these kind of high strand uh, wires here. So the, uh, the solder I'm using is um, Silver Eutectic lead solder, so it's 60-something um, percent um, tin, 36% uh, lead, and then 2% uh, silver. So this means that it wets and sets uh, much more evenly and much faster than your regular 60-40 lead uh, solder, and it gives you a much stronger and shinier join. It's really, really easy stuff to work with, and I can highly recommend it over, over um, lead-free solder or even just standard lead solder. So making sure our soldering tip is nice and clean. Just going to tin the tip, and then apply that tin tip to the wire, and you can see it's burning off the flux. There we go. So then I apply solder to the hot wire and the uh, the flux really helps the wire, uh, really helps the solder join. Um, it removes any little oxides from the surface so the whole thing, I mean you can see that doesn't really look tinned at all but it is. It's The solder is sucked all the way through the wires to give a much more even coverage. So what we're going to do, you got to remember that the flux will cause corrosion if you leave too much of it in, if it's not all burnt away. So I'm just going to remove the excess flux. And that's important, uh, especially in Dean's connectors. If you get any little bits of corrosion in here, it's quite a tight space and it can be hard to, uh, it can be hard to remove. So now we've tinned this, I've cleaned my soldering tip and we're going to put the heat shrink on just now so we don't forget. Now uh, you can see I've cut one one of these wires um, and that just means that you don't get any short circuits while you're working with this. Uh, if you cut both wires at the same time you're going to short circuit across the edge here which is not so nice. So this is a little Dean's um, holder old Deans and uh, various sizes of bullet connectors. You can get them for uh, eight or nine pounds, about fifteen dollars from from Hobby King and a few other places. Very very handy. So what we're gonna do is clean our soldering tip and then tin it again. We're applying that tin tip to the edge of our Deans connector and then we apply the solder to the hot Deans connector and the solder will flow 
to the source of the heat. So uh, when you're doing wires and things, and when it's not flat uh, on the table like this, uh, you want to let gravity um, help you. So you might have noticed when I was soldering this one, um, I had the wire slightly pointing up, the source of the heat on the bottom, and apply the solder from the top so it, um, it covers all the wire. That's just a neat little trick there for you. So now we're going to tin the, uh, the second contact. So apply the solder to the, uh, to the soldering iron tip, heat up that contact, and then apply our solder to the hot contact, and it will flow towards the source of the heat. So you can see here, you've just got a nice little dome of solder over the whole contact and it's all shiny and smooth. So that's what you want it to look like. Now for soldering the Dean's connectors, um, I found that the solder, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, flux core of the solder is enough um, to get an excellent join here but it's not quite enough um, on your thicker kind of multi-strand wire, which is why we use the extra flux there. So now we've got that sorted, we're going to melt these two halves together. So we've got a, a tinned wire and a tinned connector. We've got our heat shrink on the wire. So let's tin our soldering tip. and melt these two together. So it shouldn't take long. Let's, there we go. Let's position myself where I can actually see it above the camera. Oh. This is what happens when I've got a camera in front of my face. I can't see what I'm doing, so I'll need to just... Uh, <laughs> need to just get a little bit more solder on there. There we go. That's better. And just like that, it only takes a few seconds to uh, melt those two together, hold it all nice and steady while it sets, which again doesn't take very long at all with this solder. So you can see there that is a very nice smooth shiny join and it is very very strong I mean I couldn't break that if I tried I would uh, pull the connector out of the housing before I break that join and that's that's how it should be so we'll uh, we'll chuck our heat shrink over and again we do this now so that uh, so that we don't have any possibility of short circuiting this if our soldering iron slips and bridges the two contacts. Got my heat gun set to about 280 degrees and that's enough to quickly and evenly shrink our uh, heat shrink. So this is the heat shrink um, that's included with these connectors from WS Deans. It is, I mean, it's probably the best quality heat shrink I've ever used. Um, I've no idea where to source it outside of outside of uh, the Dean's packets, but um, yeah, if anyone knows what heat shrink WS Dean's use, <laughs> give us a wee shout, and I would uh, greatly appreciate it. So now we're uh, going to move on to our second one. It's time to uh, cut the wire, so we'll just line them up, cut our wire like this, and then uh, about four mil on the end. We're just gonna shove that insulation up and twist as we pull off, and that helps keep the strands together. Keep the strands together. I know how to talk sometimes. There we go. So again, you see the wire pointing slightly up, and that's gonna let gravity help our solder join as well. Bit of flux over the top there. There we go. And now I can put you off to one side. Clean our soldering iron tip. Ah, now I should say that um, 
this is a 70 watt soldering station um, but um, 50 and 60 watts is fine as well for quick efficient soldering I don't really recommend anything much less than about 50 watts uh, really you want to be getting to 60 watts uh, especially if you want to not have to wait um, for ages between joins for your uh, tip to heat up so just make sure you're nice and clean I'm just using a little uh, brass oh, I'll show you here's my little stand with the uh, brass coils for the cleaning so again we're gonna let gravity help us with the uh, solder join here so I'm gonna apply the tinned soldering iron tip to the bottom and then apply the solder to the hot wire at the top and it'll flow down towards the source of heat aided by gravity to get a wonderful even coverage and that is our second wire tinned again it doesn't really it's a bit shiny but it, you can still see the strands it maybe doesn't look um, it doesn't uh, look particularly tinned I know before I started using extra flux I'd have big globs and a big dome of solder over that and um, certainly all the internal strands weren't evenly evenly coated in solder uh, so you'd sometimes uh, have some issues if your join wasn't perfect so yeah extra flux really really helps it's uh, three or four times faster soldering with extra flux on these big thick multi-strand wires so we've got our heat shrink on don't forget that and we'll clamp our connector back down get you all ready clean our soldering iron tip which is uh, sitting about 450 degrees perfect for Dean's connectors tin the tip and hold everything in place nice and solid and steady melt the two together should only take a few seconds there we go and we have a nice shiny even dome of solder that creates a very strong conductive join so that's basically it that's my technique and I think it served me pretty well there we go that's about as good as it gets really so we'll uh, we'll chuck our heat shrink over and get it shrunk there we go and that is that's as, uh, as good as any join I've ever done so yeah I would not expect to have any issues with that you've got very very strong <coughs> joins there on our nice <laughs> Turnergy Nanotech batteries. So yeah, um, give us a shout if you have any questions uh, or comments, just chuck them below and I will do my very best to uh, answer all of them. And um, yeah, we'll see you next time.